Okay. Hey, Zach, how's it going? All right. How about oh. you? Oh, it's it's going it's going good. It's it's October now, so mm -hmm. it's it's Halloween. You know, Pete's streaming right now, and Pete, I'd yeah. and I'd much rather be doing that than. This. <laughs> <laughs> um, but we have a guest. We're doing another gents challenge, and we've got another guest. Yeah. Say hello, Pestro. Hello. Thanks for having me on, guys. Yes, Pestro, a long time uh, member of the extended family of our podcast, lived on <laughs> oh, yeah. long history from Hey Listen years ago, a podcast we did literally years ago now. It started in 2012 and went to like 2015. I was a late yeah. addition to that podcast. Yeah, you came in like 2014? Something yeah, like something that. like that. But Petro has been there the whole ride, and now we're here today in a new form. Yeah, it feels so long ago. It's almost like an alternate timeline. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, I was just going to say that uh, I feel like we've been having Rusty on too much, so we need to have someone new. Yeah, I mean, I think it now is as good a time to say as any, now that Rusty's not on here, that I just I just really can't stand that guy. No, <laughs> yeah, we never liked him personally. We've only done it to get ourselves ahead. Yeah, I mean, he's just, I mean, he's just like... He's just a horrible human being. I mean, who can who can stand? No, Rusty is like one of the nicest people <laughs> that I know. So yeah, um, but we need some but, new uh, blood. Yeah, we need some new we need some new fresh faces. So someone to come in and, and ruin the whole thing, bring some uncertainties <laughs> to the mix. So also, also, <laughs> no. also no. the the sole moderator of the Rascals and Gents Discord server. I guess so. Yeah. <laughs> And speaking of Rascals and Gents, the Discord server we're all a part of, this is a little tradition we have called the Gentleman's Challenge, where you get paired up with other people, and they assign you what games you have to complete within about a two-month deadline, and we, we're all a part of it. We've all, we've all been a part of like the last several Gents Challenges, but um, this one we're going to do one video in the beginning, one video at the end, and we'll see uh, who comes out of it as a gentleman who comes out as a rascal yeah pestro you we have should. a you have a pretty good record for yourself i believe you've uh you've only been a rascal once in the past i suppose four. i'm never supreme though so never this time I, this time i really hope to finally make the last stretch <laughs> i really tried hard though um especially when uh, i had Star Fox adventures i think you assigned it to me alec actually Hey, I, I, I really wear a Star Fox shirt. Right yeah, now. you are. How about that? I, got like, I love Star Fox. I think I got it over halfway into the game, but yeah, I couldn't finish it in time. But, it, it's uh, it's a weird game. It's I don't I don't know how well it's really aged. I know a lot of people are very hmm. critical of it, but hmm. um, I actually really enjoyed it. I thought it was great. Um, yeah, it's definitely like different. <laughs> yeah. Just don't think Star Fox and yeah. Right. I think it was yeah. a pretty fun adventure game. Yeah. Yeah. If if only if only Nintendo hadn't forced their hand, maybe Rare would have had another a, a little hidden masterpiece there. But <laughs> yeah. it's instead it always will have to live with Star Fox on its <laughs> name now. <laughs> but, Pretty much. Yeah. So of the three of us, I'm I pulled up my spreadsheet of gentlemen's challenge statistics that I've compiled. Oh man. Uh, and uh, Pestro has the best chance if you want to bet on someone to be a gentleman. <laughs> He's got 75%, 3 out of 4 that he's participated in. And then I have 60% and 3 out of 5 that I... I <laughs> wait, so I have less of a chance because I participated in one more tense challenge and was a rascal in that one. <laughs> uh, and then Alec has a 40% chance because he's been a gent 2 out of the 5 times. Dang. Nice. Yikes. I gotta, I gotta, yeah, gotta step it up. But I feel like this this is a gentleman like group we have here. We could all come back gentlemen in the end. You now we should talk about what games we each got, who we were partnered with, and whatnot. Um. So I was in I was in the the weird threesome. Oh uh, yes, the threesome. <laughs> the threesome. The yeah. classic gents threesome, which happens when an odd number of people sign up. Yeah, I, I actually speaking of speaking of Rusty, I actually I saw him in in uh, Pete's stream the other day, and I, I was like, ah, oh, you should have come in. And he I was know. like, yeah, I got texted by Zach at like eleven fifty, and I was already asleep. So yeah, I was well, like, ah, well. Well, I texted was... him earlier than the day, and he was like, yeah, I might get one in by the end of the night, but no promises. Yeah, he said, well, there's a lot of releases coming out between now and the end of the year, and I think he's he's wanting to wanting to hunker down with some of those. He there also, is there's he a also, lot of games. He also knows he would be a rascal again. 
He's yeah. not willing to accept it. <laughs> he doesn't want to face the shame, <laughs> I guess. Um, so yeah, so I was paired with... Um, I chose for... Okay, his, he goes by wait, Dire wait, Dire Docs on... Oh, yeah, oh yeah. what? Yeah, I was... That's who I got... That's who I chose for. But, uh... But it's... It's Trevor is his name. Um, but I was... Uh, Rockman Dash uh, was the one who picked for me. Uh, and he picked... Uh, Sonic Adventure 2 Battle for the Nintendo GameCube. And then I think there was some a little confusion. Because he... He originally <laughs> chose Final Fantasy 9. Then he was like, Oh, wait, I meant to choose Final Fantasy 4. <laughs> And the were, and then you stepped in, Zach, and we're like, but he doesn't have that on his list. And he's like, oh, uh, Final Fantasy VI it is then. <laughs> I was like, uh, okay. <laughs> so Sonic, Sonic Adventure 2 and uh, and Final Fantasy VI uh, on the SNES Classic. Um, so I will be making my way through those. I actually started Sonic Adventure 2 last, last night. I've made it back to about where I got when I was playing it in college. Um, it's, it's a game. <laughs> um, I, I, I have a, I have a, I have a weird, I love Sonic. I really do. Um, I don't think it's not, I'll give it this. It's not as bad playing it now as my memory of, was it playing it when I did in college? And maybe it, maybe it's just because of the meme status that the Sonic Adventure games have kind of gotten. Cause like. A lot of people defend those games probably more than they deserve because um, they're not really great games, to be honest. But they are fun games, and they meant a lot to a lot of people when they were growing up. So I can understand some of the nostalgia behind it. Um, there is there is a charm to them, despite them not being, like, 10 out of 10 games. Um, uh, especially the music. Music's great. And... Um, yeah, I mean, I've been I've been really liking it so far. I'm, I'm pro- I only played about an hour of it, probably. So how are you feeling about that in, in relation to Sonic and the Secret Rings? How is it stacked oh, up? Oh, it's like infinitely better than that. <laughs> like I'm having I'm actually having fun. So that's something. Nice. I'm I'm having I'm having fun outside of the like <laughs> music that was in <laughs> Sonic and the Secret Rings. That was just the worst thing. And I felt yeah. bad for Steve Conti, but uh, yeah, no, I'm having I'm, fun, and and uh, yeah, I'm really curious you... to hear what you have, like, what you think of it, because I, I actually I have the game for PC, and I I've, I've tried to play it many times, and I keep putting in like two three hours, and I'm just like, I don't know, man, <laughs> <laughs> and I just I, I just kind of quit, but I've really tried like many times, and I just, but yeah, so I'm really curious to hear what you think after you, you know, put a little bit more time into it. Yeah, I mean, I really. So I'm also like, kind of. I was gonna say, I I really like the Sonic levels a lot. Um, like, they're, I'm having fun when I'm playing as Sonic. I think sometimes the control. I don't know if it's like. There's like a weird transfer between the controls of the GameCube and the Dreamcast or something like that. I don't know if there was more, if you had more analog control or if it really did like zip to one of the eight directions, or not. Like, I feel like when I'm, I feel like it's like, you, you take like. Turns are way too quick, or something. Yeah. Um, yeah. W- w- when you mentioned it, it feels a little bit janky. I was like, yeah. yes, <laughs> that is exactly <laughs> my takeaway from the game too. It, it doesn't feel like super smooth. <laughs> yeah, it feels. It doesn't feel like you're actually in control of anything, which is. Yeah. I don't know. I guess that's. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I I've been enjoying it though, um, for what it is, um, and it's actually this is actually kind of a, a redemption. Uh, challenge for me because I played both of these games before, but I've never beaten Final Fantasy VI. I've played the first probably half, two thirds, uh, however, wherever you would say the world of ruin starts. I played through that part of the game probably like four or five times, and I've just never been able to finish it. So I, I'll, I'm finally, I'm gonna try to be Supreme Gent this time. I'm really gonna, gonna stick to it. I'm really gonna try to try to play through, okay. play through to the end. So because I, I love that game. Actually, I have a shirt I could have worn that has Final Fantasy VI stuff on it. So, I've just just never done it. So, that'll be that'll be what I'm doing. And uh, I don't even remember what I picked, Trevor. Oh yeah, I uh, Chrono Trigger and uh, something. <laughs> <laughs> Chrono Trigger was the more, most important one to give him. Chrono Trigger <laughs> and The Legend of Zelda: Twilight Princess. Oh, Twilight Princess. Yeah, yeah, mm. that's right. It's a great game. True Chrono Link pick right there. <laughs> yeah, right there. Yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Proto Link. To my, yes. to my silent protagonist name. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> I didn't even realize that. I, I, I get. I, I, I think I did when I was like the Chrono part. I was like, yeah, Chrono Trigger. That's my name. I didn't even like think about the fact that I gave him a Zelda game to do. <laughs> yes. Now who goes next? Tell it. You, you pick. All right. Oh wait, Pestro. You you you. Uh, all right. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, so, screw you, Zach. I don't know. <laughs> I'm with you all the time. Pestro's our guest. Mm-hmm. Why'd you let me go first? <laughs> well, I let you guys fight it out about it, and you were very aggressive. You said, I want to go first. I want to go. It's true. So, yeah, my picks are actually <laughs> kind of interesting. Um, oh, yes. Because um, I- I'm going to be honest. So, I actually have the games here. So, I guess, first of all, we have Horror Moon 64. <laughs> yeah. So, it's so honestly... So I have to be honest here. Um, I I've played one Harvest Moon game before in my entire life, mm-hmm. and that was on the Game Boy, or it was a Game Boy Color, I forget. Um, and I bought it when it came out, and I was really excited because I heard so much about the Harvest Moon series, and it's an RPG, and it's like takes place on a farm. And I was like, cool, I love RPGs, you know. So I bought it, and I had no idea what the hell I'm doing, and I was just <laughs> like. <laughs> no, this game sucks. <laughs> I I could not get into it. Like I, I really tried, and for after two weeks, I just I think I sold my copy. I was just I'm done. <laughs> so yeah. I'm really scared about this. Actually, I have no idea. Like I, so I, I've actually seen uh, my wife play this because she actually really like Horror Moon 64, and she likes the entire series pretty much. But but I've watched her like casually sometimes play it, and I it seems like she knows exactly what to do. Like she she has like a plan, like a strategy, and everything. And I feel like. I'm always puzzled, like, huh? Because it's kind of, I, I mean, yeah, I, I, I just feel clueless when I'm playing it. So, so I, I have no idea how this is gonna go. I'm probably just gonna fail miserably and then <laughs> start over from the beginning after a few days, and then <laughs> I have no idea. <laughs> I'm, yeah. So anyway, I'm gonna start with Harvest Moon, I think, just because I want to at least get myself, get my feet wet with the series a little bit and try to see if I can make sense out of these things. But I know Zach here is, uh, is an expert. Oh yes, um, I'm not Harvest Moon expert. I've actually never played, I've never completed a Harvest Moon game, but I do have. Oh, wow, I do I didn't have. Know that. <laughs> I do have almost every Harvest Moon game there is, though. So, I mean, it's a it's weird. A <laughs> <laughs> it's a weird thing I have with Harvest Moon. I mean, I like games like they're. It definitely isn't an RPG. It's an it's a simulation farming simulation game, just like Animal Crossing is a some sort of simulation. It's in that realm. So yeah, if mm. you're going if you were going into it thinking it'd be an RPG, it definitely would steer you wrong because it's like there's no. In fact, RPG is known for objectives and you know clear progression, but Harvest Moon and games like that are known for like creating your your own objectives and spending <laughs> spending time how you want. And that's why like I know a lot of them aren't known for having definitive endings, but I looked at that one up and I was like, okay, somewhere around halfway through the third year, there's going to be an ending. Based on whatever progress there is, I don't. I've never played Harvest Moon sixty four, so I don't know how you do well or poorly in terms of progress. But yeah, so that's the thing. Like I, I since I, I'm such a noob with this series, I just assumed there was an ending. <laughs> like, yeah. I, so when you were like, "Oh, is there an end to the game?" I was like, "Oh, well, I, I don't know. I thought, I thought it was an ending. Like, I, <laughs> games have endings. Like, games have I endings. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, um, yeah. So there is an ending, but it'll be an interesting. I think. It sounds like, based on it, you have a good or a bad ending. And so it seems like all you have to do to beat this game is play the time. So you just need to play three years, three and a half years worth, or two and a half years worth, then you'll get there. So all it's going to take is your commitment to playing the game, rather than actually accomplishing something. But if you want a good ending, I guess you have to do well. But, you know, there's I have a weird fascination with Harvest Moon games where it's very relaxing. Uh, it's a good way to so that, just just to turn off your mind for a little bit, but also at the same time, I'm kind of a Harvest Moon casual in terms of there's like hardcore Harvest Moon fans, and they say you need to play a Harvest Moon game with a guide, pretty much. You need a guide because it tells you what what the uh, your romance options, what what stuff they like, what gifts they like, and what what crops to plant when, and all this stuff. You know, it's very involved. It's like you have. You have to keep like a regimented schedule <laughs> to to perform at a certain standard for Harvest Moon fans. And Interesting. Then, yeah, I was like, I got in over my head when I got into it. I was like, can I? Are there any of these games I can't play without a guide? I was on the Harvest Moon Reddit, 
and they were like, no, you need to play with a guide, really, because it'll oh, take... Wow. And, and the, in certain later games especially, they'll have certain cutscenes will trigger at certain times after you've made certain progress with your uh, with courting your partner, you know? It's like you have two hearts with this person, this girl you want to marry, and then if you, you pass the pond at 3.55 p.m. on this day, then it'll trigger a cutscene which will grow the relationship further. <laughs> you got to know the likes and dislikes. It's very involved, but I'm sure you'll be fine. Oh, wow. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty involved. <laughs> Thanks. That's I, very encouraging to hear. <laughs> I, don't know if I don't know if they'll be that involved in 64. I actually I remember reading um, an old, like, re like, almost religiously reading an old Nintendo Power article about Harvest Moon 64 and being so fascinated by it. And I never, I never got into the series. I remember being like super interested in that. And then when the GameCube and Game Boy Advance ones came out, I remember being really interested in those. Like, oh, I kind of want to pick those up, or like at least maybe like Friends of Mineral Town. I was like, I kind of want to get that. Um, but I, I never, never, never came my way for, for a birthday present. So I never, I never experienced Harvest Moon. Mm -hmm. And and the series is just like completely. I don't even know what's going on with it anymore. I, I know Rune so Factory. Many games, yeah. I know Rune Factory kind of interested me, but yeah, there's just there's just there's too many of them. There's too many of them. <laughs> yeah, I, I know. Um, I think I asked my wife this, like, what's a good starting Harvest Moon? Because she's played pretty much all of them, I think. And she thought the 3DS one was her pick as like a good entry, like, um, you know, Harvest Moon game. It also has like a lot of depth and stuff. So I I, I don't like the new beginning. I think it was called. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good. But one. anyway, I mean, I've heard. And also, the new Harvest Moons are not proper Harvest Moon anymore. Like, the ones that are released now on the Switch, and there was, like, one on the Wii U or something. They're Harvest Moon, but it's not really Harvest Moon because the creators aren't working on it anymore. It's now... It's just the only thing that's uncommon with it is the name. So now Story of Seasons is a really Harvest Moon now. It's, like, the new brand for Harvest Moon. So like Yeah, wasn't there, like, a rights... A rights thing problem with that with like Natsume and something and like yeah. there was like some weird licensing or copyright issues or something with the with the name oh wow yeah <laughs> interesting it, it's funny you said that uh, you feel the games are relaxing so oh. <laughs> here's here's my experience playing Horace Moon I start the game and I see like a field and I'm like okay I'm gonna start you know sewing things and then oh wait no, time is running out. The shops are closing. Oh shit! I gotta <laughs> run true. over. Oh no! Now I'm tired. Now I have to go to sleep. Oh no! Now it's too late. I can't get to bed in time. And then like I wake up the next day and I'm just like panic mode. It's like I don't know. You're right. Yeah. <laughs> I, I need I need a strategy. I think. But yeah. I, um, anyway. So yeah, that's my I, that's my first it, game. It is stressful yeah. though because it's like yeah, a mi an hour is a minute in that game. So it's like you can't keep up with the jobs. Like yeah with things closed and all that but yeah it's definitely Harvest Moon is an acquired taste you're either going to like it or not like it and that's all there is to it cool yeah I'm going to try though I'm going to try and see if I can yeah. at least you know understand what's going on so that's the, the first game which I'm excited and scared to play uh, mm -hmm. the second game is a little bit more I think a longer game so I've reg like usually play <laughs> and it's uh, Son of the Enders so I, I have to be honest so I, I was um a little bit worried actually because when I looked at my copy I opened it and I see disc one some of the enders it says someone else disc one and then oh no Metal Gear Solid 2 <laughs> what <laughs> so I, I I was really I tried to google like oh shit did someone put the wrong disc in the disc 2 but all the cops I could find on eBay have Metal Gear Solid 2 on it also says disc 2 so I assume it's like a demo or something that was you know shipped with it it was a it was a demo disc that was released. Um, actually, one of the selling points of Zone of the Enders was it's a Hideo Kojima game, and it has the first it has the tanker chapter of uh, of Metal Gear Solid Two on it. So it was like, here, buy the game so you can play uh, Metal Gear Solid Two. And they did the same thing again with uh, the Zone of the Enders HD collection, where they released the, a demo of uh, Metal Gear Rising on it. Oh, when nice! I, when I came out, um, so, so yeah, it was kind of like here, buy this game because it's got the other game that you really want. Because <laughs> um, it was like it's like a mech action game, and it's it, so it's not, 
it's unusual. Um, you know, it's not a game. I've heard good stuff about that game. Yeah, no, I'm actually really excited um, to play this. I, I haven't really played any of the games in the series, so um, I'm. I think this will be a good uh, tie in as well because I think the Gems Challenge ends in two months, and around that time, hopefully, Death Stranding is out. So and I'm actually really looking forward to that game. So I think oh, yeah. hopefully this will tie nicely into that. Um, I guess, but yeah, no, I, I love Kojima in general, so I did, I'm pretty sure I'll like this one. I've seen some videos, and it looks pretty ace, so mm. should be a good time, yeah. I think. So, well. so with your confidence, with your confidence level on um, being a gentleman, supreme gentleman in the challenge. Oh, I, I, so I may do really well or really badly, I think, because it depends on how well I can tackle Harvest Moon, because that's the first one I want to. Because I, I don't want to. If if I start with some of the Enders, I'm afraid there's not going to be enough time left for Harvest Moon. And I really want to try Harvest Moon because I have no idea how long it's going to take me. I really, I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I, I want to start with it, but it, it's kind of risky to start with it. But yeah, I'm going to go for it. So I, I think success rate. I have no idea, actually. <laughs> I really I think, don't. I think if you make yourself, <laughs> if you hate the game, if you can make yourself play this game, your success rate is guaranteed because you're. Mm -hmm year three in like the beginning of summer it's like the end comes i guess so it's like you could you could really technically accomplish nothing the whole time and then just <laughs> <laughs> oh that's the way it is oh okay that's oh, what i think it is i think it's just like at the end and it'll be like you've made good progress well, you made bad progress and that will decide your ending well you didn't find a wife so you <laughs> failed <laughs> <laughs> You didn't see that magic cutscene at the bridge. <laughs> you weren't there. <laughs> you weren't there at the right time. Yeah, yeah I uh, I'm hope. I'm hope I imagine Harvestman sixty four is not as involved, but I don't know anything about it. I, I'm hopefully I'm gonna say sixty percent success rate is what I'm mm, shooting. Not seventy five percent. Okay, only for you, Zach. <laughs> <laughs> All right. I, I think I, I'm probably gonna spend the first month on Harvest Moon, and if if I haven't gotten anywhere, or I feel like I don't know what I'm doing, I, I might, I might just switch. Oh, yes. The classic switch that, that gives you yeah. more success. <laughs> it feels dirty, but sometimes you have to go for it <laughs> to, re to reclaim your status. Yeah, you gotta do what you gotta do, man. It's a hard life. You know? <laughs> All right. So for mine, I was uh, paired with Thanos, of course. Uh, the from, legend from Avengers Endgame. Uh, <laughs> yeah, Th Thanos came He's... in and he he didn't snap his act. He didn't. So uh... Thanos yeah. trademark. Yeah. And I think I think I've got an easy ride to the end. I think I'm gonna win this thing. I'm gonna be a supreme gent. Mark my words. <laughs> so I've got Contact on the DS, and this game is uh, interesting. I actually played a little bit of it just the other day. Started playing it. I think this will be the first one I do. I'm not a huge fan of it. Conceptually, I like it, but so far I'm not a huge fan of it in terms of, like, the the combat is one of the ones where you have to, like, wait. It's one of the, uh... You just, like, initiate battle mode, and then you just wait for him to swipe and swipe. Uh, so I'm not huge into, into that so far, but it seems like a really interesting concept where it's, like, there's stuff happening on the top screen of the DS that's, like, different from the bottom screen, and it's, like, it interacts pretty uniquely. And apparently it's a it's a hidden gem. I remember back in the old community days hearing about this when people talked about hidden gems in the DS a lot. Atlas game, Contact, uh, and also my other game was Saints Row the Third. So of course these are the two I expected out of my list. My <laughs> my long it's Sonic Adventures over there. I can't grab mine. <laughs> I I had like a hundred games on my list, and these are the two I knew they would come up. Contact and Saints Row the <laughs> You're Third. You're positive. <laughs> yeah. Honestly, I've never even heard of Contact before it was mentioned. <laughs> yeah. I'm still not sure entirely what the like the goal is of that game, but it's like, okay, we'll see how it goes. Feeling it out. But it seems. I feel like I feel like Suda Fifty One had something to do with that game. Maybe. Memory serves. I think that was one of the reasons why I was kind of interested in it because I love that guy. Mm -hmm. I've loved I've loved basically every game he's he's ever made. They're they're not all as good as each other, but they're always fun. So um, I don't know if I'm gonna look that up. Mm -hmm. anyway. So I mean, yeah, this and then Saints for the Third. 
which I mean I know how it plays. I played a little bit of it, and I don't think I'd have any problem beating it. Um, looking on howlongtobeat.com, which is what I, I go for at the beginning of each challenge, both of these are 11 hours according to howlongtobeat.com. So that okay. seems like an easy win. I'm done. I, I would beat both of these. That's how I do it. <laughs> but uh, Met Metroid Prime, it said, I forget what the amount was that it said it would take, and it took me almost like double the length. So You must uh, have been wandering around in the in Fendrana Waste too much. No, I was like, I was booking it at the ninth hour of the challenge. The last day, I was like, just get me where I need to go. <laughs> and it was taking forever. But these it seems doable. Saints for the third. If for some reason I can't I don't like contact that much, then I can always switch to Saints for the Third. I know that's a game I'll enjoy at the very least and, and won't be hard to get through. So, uh you can uh quote me now. I will be a Supreme Gent at the end of this challenge. It'll be the first time I'm a Supreme Gent. <laughs> Supreme so and scholar. I I can confirm Suda51 Suda was not a part of Contact, but his company, Grasshopper Manufacturer, was. So that, sure. that was where I that's where I get that from. Anyway, so we're so we're all we're all gunning for Supreme Gent then, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Um, the difference is I will achieve my goal, and you too. <laughs> <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> I don't know. I'm gonna play on that magic cutscene. You two yeah, have harder. You, you two have harder roads ahead of you. I feel like so. Yeah, Sonic Sonic Adventure Two shouldn't be too hard. Um, well, that's true. Yeah. What's gonna be What's gonna be kind of more difficult is Final Fantasy VI. I know it's in terms of length, it's not one of the longer games in the series, as far as I'm aware. I know I've gotten to World of Ruin within thirty hours, easily. Um, the key to that is how much of the extra content do I want to do? How much Esper grinding do I want to do? Do I want to really break the game's mechanics because the the game mechanically is not? If you really like delve into like, there's a lot of exploits in that game because it's there's a, there's a lot of tricks and stuff because the game just doesn't work properly. Like things like the status ailment blind do nothing, um, which normally that's supposed to make it so that you aren't accurate, but it actually doesn't do anything to you at all. Mm -hmm. So. Um, <laughs> Um, th weird things like that. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. It, uh, I it's funny. No, sorry, I was just saying. It's, it's funny that, that you mentioned before that you made it to World of Ruin uh, three times or something like that. Because I, 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 I was in the same boat actually when I first played it. It just got so depressing. I couldn't go on. <laughs> yeah, I, um, I don't know if it's just. I don't know if it's necessarily that, or I don't know. There's something. Because I want to see how that story finishes. Because everybody, you know, it's one of the more most beloved games in the franchise, and um, at least in terms of an older audience, I would say. Um, and yeah, I mean, I just kind of want to. I want to delve more into World of Ruin because I think there's a lot of really interesting stuff there. Um, you know, delving into some of the alternate, the extra characters you can get. So there's like, I don't know, delving into that world as how it functions and everything is just like really interesting because because of who you recruit you recruit really weird people after the because yeah, for anyone who doesn't know your party kind of splits up after a certain point in the game you can go around and recruit everybody again but then there's other characters that you can go find who are just like bizarre like you can get like a like a guy who mimics other people you can get like a giant yeti to like be on your team like it's you, it gets weird <laughs> and <laughs> So I, I'm I'm definitely interested in in, in delving more into that because the story up to that point is phenomenal, and so I, maybe it's just maybe it's just because I don't like how much it opens up, or I don't know. We'll see we'll see how I feel about it kind of soon because there's a lot of games that are out now that I'm playing, and games I should need to finish before I get to it. So Persona Five being one of them, <laughs> like I put almost like 90 hours into that game, and yeah. All right, so. We will come back in uh, two months, and we'll have three supreme gents, unprecedented. Wow, it'll be great. We better. We should. I hope so. No rascals. I hope so. No rascals allowed in this meeting. <laughs> well, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for joining us, Pestro. Yeah. Oh, thank you for having me. Yes. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll a good time. We will welcome you back when it when it comes to it. Very cool. All right.
Bye bye. All right, and. Yeah. <laughs>